I've entitled this message today, The Preparation. Are you ready for Christmas? Yeah. yeah. Yes, amen. Now, have you finished all your preparations? No. <laughs> I, I, I'm one of those people. I'm very, very steeped in tradition. And, you know, just because something is tradition doesn't mean that it's bad. Just because something is tradition doesn't mean that it's evil or wicked. You know, I, I just got into the tradition many, many years ago. I wait to do all my shopping for Sister Nancy on Christmas until Christmas Eve. That's my tradition. And uh, I'm going to keep my tradition this year. When I'm thinking about preparation, I'm, I'm, I'm going to apply it, of course, to the coming of Jesus. All the preparation that was necessary in the lives of so many people, we can never, we can never understand how it must have been for Mary when she was approached by God and asked to do a very difficult thing. She made herself available by faith. She put herself in the hands of God by faith. But just because she did it by faith didn't mean, doesn't mean it was easy. Those of you that have been walking with the Lord a little while, you know that sometimes walking by faith is not easy. Sometimes, and sometimes Walking by faith means that you're going to have to go through some of the suffering. You're going to have to go through some of the hardship. You're going to have to go through some of the tragedy. But Mary was, Mary was preparing herself. She was preparing herself for the request that God had made for her. And we all know, and we spoke of it last week, about how there had to be a lot of preparation even for Joseph. Because what he was asked to do was just as difficult as what God had asked Mary to do. But we find these two young, relatively young people making themselves available to God by faith. By faith. I'm so glad that God dealt with them in a personal way. He sent angels to them. He spoke to them. He gave them the, his words in a loving and a kind manner. And I'm still rejoicing at how much God does even today to speak to us and to, and to help us to walk by faith. So Mary and Joseph were in this time of preparation. All of their preparation was leading up to that night in Bethlehem. And then the life that had to be lived thereafter. You know, this is something we don't touch on very often at the Christmas season. But the life that they lived after Jesus was born was just as important as all the days of preparation. And brother and sister, I can say this to you, and I know it because of my own experience and my knowledge of the Word. The brother and sister, when we come to Jesus, when we find Jesus, when Jesus is born in us, that's just the beginning of what we need and what we do and how we live. And then I'm reminded of Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, and her husband, Zachariah, and how there was great preparation in their lives. See, Elizabeth was not supposed to be bearing children. She was past the age of such things. But you know, just because in the natural things don't look like they're supposed to look, that doesn't necessarily limit God, church. Elizabeth and Zechariah had to go through times of preparation. And when we think about the birth of Jesus, we auto automatically go to Mary and Joseph. But do you realize that Elizabeth and Zechariah played an important role. 
Each one of us plays an important role in the plan of God for our world, for our time, and for our place. Can you say amen? amen. And then we can't forget. And I, 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 I have been so blessed the last two days. How, how, how old is Lizzie? Three? Three years old. And she just burst out singing, We Three Kings of Oregon. They have a little program at school next week, and uh, her and Liam are in that program. In fact, Liam gets the honor of playing Joseph in the school play. And uh, these little songs, now, she doesn't pronounce all the words just right. And she doesn't get them all quite in the same order they're supposed to be in, according to the songwriter. But let me tell you something. I believe these three wise men would jump up and shout if they heard my three-year-old great-granddaughter sing this song. I do. Amen. Think about the preparation that they went through. Because God spoke to them and God gave them a sign months before Christ was born. In Bethlehem. And they had to make a journey of great distance. Great distance. I want to use some scripture from three different places today, kind of covering some of these, these individuals and their preparation. Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 39. I'm always intrigued when I read this portion of scripture. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Mary has been visited by God and she's six months into her pregnancy. Verse 39, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. This is the encouraging record of how that prior to their births, the Lord Jesus and John the Baptist, both in the womb of their mother, these mothers who had been touched by God became a blessing to one another's life. We don't know exactly why Mary made this journey. But we can believe, based on the circumstantial evidence, that she made this journey to Elizabeth's side, first of all, to encourage Elizabeth in her impossible pregnancy, her miracle pregnancy. See, Mary had a miracle pregnancy. I know that this isn't talked about a lot, and I know this isn't brought up, but I want to remind you that when God came to Mary and asked Mary, she was a virgin. Your life and the preparations of your life are just as important to God as these people that we're studying in the scripture today. You know when Mary came up and spoke to Elizabeth, the Bible goes on to say, and I didn't put all these scriptures in, but you know, as soon as she made a, a salutation to Elizabeth, the babe in Elizabeth's <laughs> womb leapt, jumped. Wonder why? I, I think John the Baptist was Pentecostal. I don't <laughs> You see, John the Baptist was being born so that he could prepare the way for Christ. So that he could go and be the forerunner of Christ. And so he could call out to a, a nation who had grown weary in well-doing call out to a nation that had become lax in their spiritual life. Call out to a nation and get them ready for salvation. There was a lot of preparation for Mary to go and to come. 
But I want you to know that the main thing that took place there was that spiritual and emotional support that these two women needed to go through what they were going through. Some of you that have lived several years, those of you that are mature, know that some days you, you need emotional and spiritual support because the, the physical part's kind of lax and waning. Amen? Oh, if we would just concentrate a little more on the spiritual man. If we just, and I've and I taught this to you before, but, you know, we believe in a thing called tithing, don't we? Yes, amen. Well, brother and sister, I believe that we ought to tithe of our, of more than just our money. And if we would put, if we would just put 10% of our time, I'm talking about our waking, value, usable time, if we just put 10% of that into our spiritual selves, Come on. So Mary made this journey. Lots of preparation. Coming and going. We all know about the preparation for a child to be born. So that was going on in both households at the same time. Now let's jump over into Luke. Chapter 2. Verses 4 or 5. Very familiar portions of scripture. Remember now. We're talking about the preparation. The preparation. The preparation. Luke 2, verse 4 and 5. And Joseph, Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Now we all know that he was to go there because of the tax that was placed on everybody there. Oh, haven't we seen a lot lately about taxes. Joseph had to go because of taxes. He was obeying the laws of the land. But he was also a man of great faith. Because he made that journey with his espoused wife. And there was an urgency to this. This wasn't a, one of those vacation trips to Disney. There was an urgency to get him to Bethlehem. Why? Because Mary was great with child. And they couldn't be on the road. They needed to get somewhere. There was also a tremendous amount of difficulty. When I get ready to go visit my folks, I have so many options on how I can get there. And if everything just works out right, I, I, can, I, I can be at my mom and dad's house in about five hours. I can make the drive from here to Love Field, get on a plane, go into to, to, to airport there in Phoenix and jump jump in the car and be at my mom and dad's house. In about five hours. Now that's everything working out just time-wise without any lack. When Mary and Joseph made this journey, it wasn't that simple. They not only had to worry about having the money to pay their taxes when they got there, but they had to worry about all the days of the journey between point A and point B. And only you women in the room know how difficult it must have been for Mary when she was expecting a great child. And she didn't have all the modern conveniences. She had to ride on the back of an animal. Very difficult. So preparation was made for that journey. And then we get into the actual birth of Jesus Let's look at Matthew chapter 2 for that one. Verses 1 and 2 of Matthew. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Now when we talk about preparation, no one in the Christmas pageant, the pageantry of Christmas, that had to do as much preparation and as lengthy of a preparation as they did. Because they journeyed hundreds and hundreds and 
hundreds of miles by caravan. We know that these were kings <coughs> by history. We know that they came bearing gifts for the Christ child. But they didn't, they moved in an entourage of hundreds of people. They had their servants. The servants that took care of their cooking, the servants that took care of their clothing, the servants that took care of setting up camp and tearing camp down, the servants that took care of the animals of burden, the servants that took care of all the food for the animals and all the food for the people. And there were just literally hundreds and hundreds of people involved in this trip. Two months. I think that anything worth enjoying should be worth the preparation. Our children have been preparing for weeks and months already for a celebration that Nancy and I are going to have in a few days. Uh, preparation is important. You know that when they got there to where the Christ child was, they brought to him gifts. We know those gifts from the scripture, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We know the symbolism of these gifts and, and what they mean to eternity and we also need to know what they meant to Mary and Joseph and the Christ child for the immediate life. You see, Mary and Joseph were now displaced from their home. There was no room for them at the inn. We're familiar with that. That's why Christ was born in a manger. But immediately, God sent to Joseph and told Joseph, don't go back home. Don't go back home, because if you go back home, there's people there that are going to try and kill the child. And so he went and took a journey. That journey, they were displaced. They were, use the term, they were homeless. If it hadn't been for the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, they would have had no way to exist. And so these, these gifts become much more meaningful when we realize they were not just for the signs and symbols of eternity. They were for the here and now. Our God cares about our here and now. Amen? Our here and now. And like I said earlier, I'm quite sure that all of you are busy making your preparations for December the 25th. The coming of Jesus required preparation. I can't believe how busy some of you are and how much you accomplish at any one given time. I'm just amazed. I used to think that I could accomplish a lot. That was just in my imagination. I have found that even when I prepare now, my production level is down. Now let me just survey the, 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 the room today. How many of you enjoy the preparation? Some do, I know, some do. Some do. And some see it as a difficult requirement of living. Because you know, sometimes, sometimes the, the pile gets over your head, you got to find something to hang on to. <laughs> the coming of Jesus required great preparation. And we just touched on the highlights today. But do you know the coming of Jesus still requires preparation? Yes. Amen? It's only nine days till December the 25th. So if you're going to do it, hurry up. But you know, we don't actually know how many days we have to prepare for the coming of Jesus. Matthew 25, 13 says, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. The wise men came into Jerusalem declaring, that there was a king born. And then the prophets have told us that that same king 
is coming back again. Hello? Brother Bill, the, re the return of Jesus Christ is not a Christmas message. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because we need to be prepared. We need to be ready. We need to be watching. We need to be worshiping and praising and lifting up Jesus. And we need to be preparing as many as we can and ourselves for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Remember when Jesus was born, the angels were out on the hillside shouting the message and singing the message of, of the birth of Christ to the shepherds in the field and to anyone else who was within sound of hearing. This time, the Lord is going to shout himself. He said, with the voice of an archangel, not, not a quiet little, timid little, uh, passive, oh by the way, but here I am. I have returned. I have returned. I'm here for my children. I'm here for my loved ones. He said also there's going to be the trump of God. So not only is the voice is going to be ringing out, the voice of God, but then the instruments and it's no coincidence that it's a trumpet. Come on. Trumpets are used to declare. I love it in the old westerns, you know, when John Wayne's been shot 14 times and got three arrows in him. And the Indians are coming over the top of the ridge and there's a bazillion of them and he's got one bullet left. And then off in the distance you hear the trumpet. Because the cavalry has arrived. And it's that trumpet that gives hope. And it's that trumpet that gives joy. And it's that trumpet that gives a warning to all those Indians. Oh. I don't know between John Wayne and Matt Dillon. Those guys got shot so many times that. He... I watched a marathon two weeks ago. I walked a marathon two weeks ago. One of those days when I couldn't get out of my chair, I was watching Gunsmoke. <laughs> I watched Gunsmoke from about 9.30 to 10 o'clock in the morning, and I watched it about that time at night. One right after the other. And my TV has that magic button, I can pause it. The sociologist in me started paying attention to how many times Matt Dillon got shot. <laughs> I forgot to write down how many episodes I wrote, but I just started making a little mark on my notepad every time he got shot. <laughs> and in one day, he got shot 13 times and stabbed twice. <laughs> Who in the world would want to stay the sheriff in a town that is that tough? <laughs> And I, I think we got the wrong guy as the hero in that show. I think Doc needs to be the hero because he always gets Matt back on his feet. Amen. Amen. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. With who? The dead in Christ. To meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The message in Bethlehem was Jesus is coming. And the message at Elm Grove is Jesus is coming. Amen. And oh church, let's not fail to get the preparation done so that when he comes, there won't be any doubt that this will be an empty room. There won't be anything left here but our iPads and our telephones. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! the message of hope that started in Bethlehem is still the message of hope today. Amen. That if I'll prepare my heart, and if I'll prepare my soul, 
by following the examples that Christ made for me when he walked on this earth. And I'll put myself before God the Father as a repentant, converted individual and then walk my life, live my life, speak my life, think my life after the pattern of Jesus Christ when that trumpet does sound. And it's going to sound. I say it's going to sound. I and my flock, my whole flock, from the eldest to the youngest, we're going to be out of here. Amen. Amen. You see, the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem was a message of hope. And brother and sister, what greater hope could we have today than our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life? And then from the babe in the manger, he became the king on the throne and is now returning to catch away his faithful, his redeemed, his holy ones, so that we can, we can forever be with him. So here we are, getting ready for December the 25th. We're honoring each other. We're loving each other. We're, 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 we're bringing the spirit of Christ into this time of year. That spirit of hope and that spirit of joy. That, that possibility of bringing hope to one more person's life. One of the cash register. Uh, I try to go to stores that still have cash registers. <laughs> and people at them. <laughs> and I don't do that because there's anything wrong with the other devices. I do that because I want to interact with somebody. I want to talk to somebody. I want to tell somebody Merry Christmas. And I said to this lady, thank you for your smile and how pleasant you've been today. Have a Merry Christmas. And she says, I don't know how to have a Merry Christmas. She said, everything that's bad that's ever happened to me has happened at Christmas time. And I said, I've met a lot of people like you. I've met a lot of people like you. But just remember, just remember, that even though we may have suffered, and we do suffer, many of us around the holidays, let's not forget the suffering that Christ went through on the cross of Calvary. And it all started in that manger in Bethlehem. And she looked at me and she said, You're one of them, aren't you? <laughs> and I said, One of what? She said, You're a preacher, aren't you? <laughs> I said, Yes, ma'am, I am. I passed her out of Elm Grove, outside of Tokyo. I've been out there forever. <laughs> and she said, you're the third one today. <laughs> I, said, I said, God's trying to show you how much he feels you're hurt. And I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to, I'm going to have some of my friends pray for you. Because we know how difficult this is for you. We know how hard it is when your heart's broken and everything around you reminds you of that heartbreak. But we're also going to pray that the same Jesus that was born in that manger, the same Jesus that died on the cross, will come and comfort you himself personally. And then the tears started. And her gratitude, she, didn't have, she, she did say another word. But in her tears, I saw her gratitude. In her face, I saw her gratitude. Right for me. Lift her up. That God would just make this the best Christmas she's ever known with the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, let's be prepared for December the 25th and the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and be dismissed from God's house today. Father, we thank you so much that we can come into your house, gather together, exalting your holy name. 
Lord, thank you for speaking to us about the preparation that's necessary, not just for this everyday world that we live in, but the preparation that's necessary for eternity. Father, if there's one in this place whose heart is not prepared, whose spirit is not prepared for that second coming, Lord, may this be the day and the hour. May these be the words that draws them close to you, brings them into their place of sanctification, and brings them into the holy walk of faith. Lord, we ask you for mercy and safety as we travel on these roads today. Lord, help us to be shining light brighter than we've ever shown before. Lord, let our Christianity, let, let the Christ in us shine forth greater during this holiday season than it ever has. That souls might be won, that saints might be encouraged, that the discouraged may find hope. Lord, that the depressed may, may, may find joy. Lord, and that, and, and that we'll sing louder than your angels as we prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. We ask it all in the holy name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.